Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to our Satisfactory Let's Play World. And now that update 4 is out, we are finally back! But, there's some good news with the update, and some kind of bad news, and a little change of strategy coming up later. But for now, remember to leave a like. And guys, it's been a while! A few months in fact, since I last uploaded here. Because we've been waiting for update 4, but now it is finally here! But super quick recap of the world! Because we have been at this world for about 750 hours, and a lot has been going on! But we left things off working on nuclear power, making the nuclear fuel rods here, and building over a hundred nuclear reactors! which ended up netting us around 420,000 megawatts of power. The number's been kind of finicky though lately. But shockingly, with all of this, we're actually not too far into our production chain here. We don't even have computers automated, because we first wanted a ton of nuclear power so we can handle all of the mega machines that we've started to build. Like the Beast 3 here, which is around 128 manufacturers, which is making 263 crystal oscillators per minute. Oh yeah, things were getting a little crazy here. So crazy in fact, we had to put the game down actually. Our frame rate was getting insane, and I can just kind of show you what it's like playing around here. So if we're running around, or doing whatever, the game is nearly unplayable, specifically when we load into different boundaries. It is pretty dang rough, so yeah, barely controllable. And of course we're in uh, creative mode right now, but even in vanilla, things are insane. So we put this world down and started a modded playthrough, which we will be continuing by the way, so definitely want to subscribe for that. And that is pretty much the recap so far. But if you're interested in the entire journey, I have the playlist link in the description. And over the last few months, I've been busy doing a ton of background work optimizing the world. I've gotten rid of trains where I could, added in belts where I could, completely revamped our water packaging station over there, and oh gosh, just power sharded everything, boxed things in, destroyed train stations. I've even completely revamped our nuclear setup with Mark II pipes as well, and redid pretty much most of the pipe work. And with all these efforts and the improvements with Update 4, I have managed to make this world relatively playable. And we're on about 16, 15 ish FPS. <laughs> which is better than the 7 it was at last time we were playing around here. And there used to be some big stutters around that would like literally just freeze us mid-flight, and it was awful. But no, things are pretty good, all things considered. Oh, except for one thing, uh, that thing. Update 4 had some good changes and some bad changes for us. So although there are a lot of awesome cool new things in Update 4, like the drones, like the hover pack, and the other myriad of awesome things added, there's also a change added. A pretty significant one. But Update 4 has made it so all power plants run at 100% capacity now, meaning they take in a lot of nuclear fuel rods and output a lot of waste. But our nuclear power plants are now producing 20 nuclear waste per minute. And our entire system is completely, fully overloaded. Because now we're making over 780 nuclear waste per minute, all the time. And pretty quickly here our entire world is going to be irradiated. And that's even with our nuclear options available. Like the silo there, or the nuclear waste crypt. You see, both of them were supposed to last with a trickle of nuclear waste, at least to a max of 780 per minute, but now we're making unfathomable amounts of nuclear waste. And all systems are overloading. Like, we can't process this stuff fast enough, we can't even store it fast enough. I don't even have enough bins, even in the pit, to handle all of this stuff. And on top of all that, we can't make any more nuclear fuel rods right now because the recipe and process has completely changed. And we need our nuclear power in order to process the nuclear waste. Thus, uh, yeah, we can't kind of do either. Meaning, 
Update 4 has kind of chernopled us. We are straight up buried in nuclear waste and radiation. Oh yes, and on top of that, there's the image from earlier in the video. This, this is just actually because of a glitch that was in the first release of update four. There have been patches that have fixed this, but pretty much the walls weren't rendering in in the entire world. So that's my base without like any walls or platforms. But what you know, it's pretty cool. But now here we are in update four, we have the world and those are the problems we're kind of facing along with all of the other belts and processes that we have to update. Uh, Alclad sheet and aluminum has to be completely redone. Most of our systems for oil have to be redone. Petropolis, it's a giant oil city that we've built, has to be redone with new recipes. And we're kind of in a bit of a spot. So I wanted to continue this world until update, well, 1.0. When the game is fully released. Cause look at this base, it's freaking amazing, right? And we still have plenty of room until the height limit of the world to increase the tower's height, which is what I wanted to do as well. Yeah, the frames though and the stuttering is brutal. And that's like the biggest thing. The nuclear waste thing is uh, kind of a disaster as well. And the reworking of literally everything is kind of a big oof too. So a lot of problems here, and I think they are insurmountable. Because with this update, there's already a heck of a lot more to do. We got nuclear pasta. We have the thermal propulsion rockets that go into the elevator. We have oh, just so many things, and this has only gotten started. So if we add any more, it's just gonna get worse. So all that being said, I think we have to kind of start a new playthrough. This world, it's kind of at its limit here, or at least it's very close to it. So we're going to start a new world. However, we're not going to start from scratch. We're actually going to start from the exact point we're at pretty much, because I got a plan. Because since all the new content is tier seven and eight, tiers one to six or zero to six, are all the same. And over these last few playthroughs we've done, we kinda know the gist of all of them. So instead of starting from the dirt, which we usually do, we're gonna start our update four playthrough in update three, so we have access to mods. And we're gonna use them to build ourselves a starter base with a fully equipped storage room. And so we'll have access to like iron plates, concrete, and all the tiers one through six items and once this is all done, we switch back to vanilla and we continue where we left off. And so that's what I've been doing over on my Twitch live streams where I'm live Monday to Friday starting at 9 a.m. PST. I have been feverishly trying to build a new satisfactory world that has tiers one to six automated and infrastructure in place because we've built train lines around the world before. Didn't want to do that again. Didn't want to put you guys through that. So. That's all done. I have a starter bees pretty much ready to go. And we're going to be having all the items inside here automated. Aside from a few like the turbo motors and radio control units and the Alclad sheets. All the tier 7 and 8 stuff will be starting from a zero with the new processes. So after making the call to switch to a new world, I have spent 30 hours over the last two weeks among all the other things I was doing setting up our new starter base for the new world. So we have all the starter items ready to go, and we kind of have a factory that's able to build more factories. At least that's how someone in my comments had put it, and I thought that was a good way to describe it. So it's a complete mess. Most of it will be destroyed and torn down later on, but hey, it works. It produces everything we need. We got heavy modular frames, we got computers, we got iron rods, the whole nine yards. Yeah, motors, crystal oscillators, even the supercomputers, because we had access to these recipes. And also, I have learned a lot about this game and leg reduction. And we definitely don't want to have all of our processes stuffed in one little area in the map, because obviously that one little area becomes unplayable. So we're going to be spreading out across the world, building factories all over the place. Like when you see this view right now, it's just like the forest in the wilderness, but we'll have spires all over the place doing our processing. 
And then also, we're going to try and make lag efficient builds. So we're gonna have train tracks without foundations under them. We're gonna build on the ground a little bit. I know, who are you watching? Who is it? Yeah, it's Kibbs, reformed Kibbs, anti-lag Kibbs. <laughs> and we're gonna be doing some strange things to try and keep this world alive because I really, 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 really want to keep it until 1.0. That's the plan. Yeah, everything's working fine. We're in update 3 right now. It runs even smoother in update 4 because of all of the optimizations. And part of the optimizations is we have train tracks going all around the biome, collecting all the stuff we need. I've prepped areas that can be easily covered for belt highways in case we need them as well. And I spent a ton of time building a new fuel power plant. It's just normal fuel using the diluted packaged fuel recipe. And this is supplying all of the power to our world. At least until we get started in update 4, where we're going to be switching straight up to nuclear. Because although all of this makes about eh, 20,000 megawatts, it's nowhere near enough. Because as a part of our lag reduction strategies here, we are going to be power sharding literally everything. Every machine, as much as possible. We're gonna have power shards out the hua zoo. Thousands, tens of thousands of power shard machines. So we can build less machines and save on the frames. Of course though, this is gonna take an insane amount of power. So we're gonna have to build like a pretty insane nuclear power plant, definitely use plutonium, the fuel plant, maybe even turbo fuel, and a whole lot more. And also, I'll just state this right now, we will be cheating a bit. As in, I am spawning in myself about 30,000 power shards. Just in creative, so that we never have to like farm lizard doggos all too much, and we can go ahead and power shard everything right from the get-go. So this is a bit much, you know, cheaty starter factory, cheaty power shards out the Huazu. But I didn't want to tread on old ground, and I wanted to build our mega factories and get into all the new content as soon as possible. We have places for drones. We can look into the blenders now. We can start on our mega projects immediately. We have the rails network that can get us around the world whenever we want. Yeah, I thought this would just be a better idea for moving forward here. But yeah, that's the whole nine yards. So I hope you guys are okay with all the changes. And let me know in the comments if you have any like concerns, questions, or anything like that. Or if you just want to let me know that you're excited for the new playthrough. However though, that's gonna be all. So, have a fantastic rest of your day. Subscribe, and bye bye